Deola Kamsen is a fashion design entrepreneur and founder of Della Beak, a women's clothing company in Vegas. Deola Kamsen runs Della Beak, which is an ethnic-inspired women's clothing brand, proudly made in Nigeria from handmade batik and tie-dye textile prints for the winning woman who wants to stand out in style. Her company takes pride in fusing African cultural heritage with modern fashion. Hamson's garments sets to empower women in several communities where these fabrics are designed using the indigenous design methods. This way, the women are economically empowered to take decisions and make financial contributions to the upkeep and well being of their families. Good afternoon, Miss Evelyn. How are you doing yourself? I'm doing very fine. You're looking so sweet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're not looking bad. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, you know, to meet with you any day, any time. Thank you. From zoology to fashion designing, what an amazing journey. Can you share with us how you got into the world of fashion? Well, it's more of um, a love of art and a love of making things. It's more a lot of um, creative design, more than fashion itself. As in, I've always loved being creative. I've always loved fine things. I love colors, different hues of colors. I like texture. I like um, beautiful things. That's just me. I love to behold beautiful things. So I remember that um, I loved um, seeing arts and crafts from a tender age. I remember going into quintessence with my mom and I would just get lost in the store, get lost looking through all the, first of all, their books were amazing. They had like cultural books, you know, um, titles in Yoruba and made in Nigeria books for, for kids. So all the books had illustrations and all that. And then I would see all the toys, the made in Nigeria toys, which, my, which were more of crafts than even toys. There were things that you buy and you keep as artifacts, you know? So they had all sort of things, painted uh, mud cloth, um, all the downfall, wooden downfalls and um, lorries, you know? They had all the guitar men, just lovely arts and crafts, as in, there were lovely things to behold inside quintessence. So I remember loving all of those um, sides from there. And most especially, my love for art came from the fact that my mom is, um, she's a theater artist, but most especially wow. she, uh, she is a costume designer. So in those days of um, Nigerian Industrial Bank, known as Citibank now. Um, they used to sponsor Nigerian playwrights. She did the costumes for most of those playwrights that were sponsored then. Wale Shoinka, Femi Oshofison, Wale Ogonyemi, you know, all those authors were, were sponsored by the then um, NIB, known as Citibank now. So we're always around artists. 
uh, as um, young young kids who were always around artists. And then she had a job at National Council for Arts and Culture. At the National Council for Arts and Culture, they were situated um, near the National Theatre in Igomo. There was an artist village behind the National Gallery for Arts. We were always mixing with all those people, painting, drawing, you know, exhibitions. We would stay there, leave for home at night. So I've grown up with art. So it's not a surprise that I would then get into art later on in life. More so, I read zoology and um, zoology is biology. And in biology, you are introduced to specimens in the lab. There are long hours, long hours, all those hours of sitting down in the lab, drawing specimens for five hours, six hours, as in that's how long the lab hours were for. And I thought I was suffering. Lo and behold, turns out I wasn't suffering. I was only sharpening my skill for the use of pencil because we would sit in the lab and um, we would have to draw like cockroach feet to up to 1,000 times magnification, you know? And um, you have to draw all the brushes and, you know, the, the salient features of these organisms. So the day I decided I wanted to do um, pattern making and fashion design, it didn't take me five minutes to draw the human the human figure. I'd never drawn a human figure, but because I was adept with my pencil, it was a piece of cake for me. So, yeah, zoology to um, fashion or creative design. We're all human beings learning, uh, <laughs> learning one thing or the other. Nobody should be limited to doing science or arts. So I, 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 I was very fluid with um, navigating science and arts. Wow. I was very fluid in science and arts. Well, what was it like at the very beginning? At the very beginning, I will be telling lies if I say that it was easy peasy like that. Uh. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I love to design clothes. I love creative designing. I love to paint. I love to um, conceptualize, you know. It's one thing to do that. It's another thing to now learn how to, how to make. So in, in fashion, you call it cut, make, train. It's one thing to learn the production side of fashion. It's another thing to now learn the business side of it. And it's another thing, again, to marry the two together. So your production and then your marketing and sales. Because you can't make things and not sell them. The sole purpose of um, business or entrepreneurship is the bottom line. You have to make your profits. So there was that thing of, um, OK, I've come back. for me because at that time I had three children all under two so I have um, twins my twins had just turned one when I went to do the short courses and I went for like a period of one year not the entire one year in between I came home so it had all of that but I was determined I was determined to make it. <laughs> I was determined. So it wasn't um, an easy start, but we kept on going. And as they say, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first few steps. So here I am today, running De La Bic, <laughs> and we have chosen to continue doing this business for how many years now? 
more than 10 years, more than 15 years. So we're thankful to the Lord. <laughs> wow. Indeed, the journey of a thousand miles starts with just a step. It is quite an interesting story and an interesting journey as well. Um, on the journey to where Delabic is today, what were some of the challenges encountered and how are you able to surmount some of them to become the brand you are today? Breaking into the fashion scene in Lagos <laughs> is no joke. It's, um, it's a clicky kind of um, setting. It's a, it's a no, you can't sit with us kind of setting. So that was one huge um, hurdle to surmount. Um, but let me say that, first of all, it was lack of skilled labor. At the time that I started, it was so difficult to get staff. Um, what I learned at the London College of Fashion was pattern making. Pattern making to make and to cut, make and trim the clothes, you know. So um, at that time in Nigeria, there weren't too many people who knew how to do the pattern making. So for pattern making, oh, it was difficult getting skilled labor. Now, the other aspect of um, the business side of things, I had to make sure that I found, I sat down a lot of online learning and a lot of joining um, young women's business groups. There were some um, people who were ready to mentor us on business side of things. So I knew that I had to face that, learn the, um, the processes and the structure for the business so that you set up a solid foundation. These businesses have to outlive us. They are not hobbies. So we, I, I, I had to do that. I had to do that. Some were, those, those were some of the challenges, specifically learning the business side of fashion and also getting skilled labor, getting the skilled labor. And of course, the third thing, which is in fact the most important one, getting fabrics. We don't manufacture fabrics in Nigeria. What we do, the most of what we do is um, textile surface design. So getting fabrics was another um, puddle that I had to surmount. So those were some challenges that we faced and that we have um, learned the ropes of how to overcome and succeed. And I must say congratulations too, because um, you have not just um, learned the rope, you are also one of those brands that um, your designs are always trending, especially among the uh, cream de la cream of uh, the, the country and even You've even gone global, if I must say. Uh, your designs have been trending, not just on social media, but even in the regular media. Um, Sky News carried uh, some um, some news on your design, including CNN and even um, Ovation. Dele Momoji of Ovation also posted some uh, pictures. Uh, you know, sporting um, some Nigerian women. You know, the uh, beautiful Ashwebi, you know, celebrating, you know, the uh, <laughs> Queen of England, His Her Royal Ma Majesty, uh, the Queen of England. Uh, tell us more about your this, that particular story, especially behind that Ashwebi that you made for those Nigerian women who attended Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Oh, <laughs> that was something that... Um, now, first, before we go started... into it, first, as I'm talking about the, uh, the design and all that, and I must say congratulations indeed. You have not just um, surmounted 
a lot of those challenges. You are today one of the brands to be reckoned with in Nigeria and even globally. In fact, congratulations again. Your, um, your designs have been trending, but not just on social media, but even on regular international media. Uh, CNN has carried uh, uh, it and even Sky News and recently um, Daily Momodu of our own uh, prestige uh, ovation. You have not just uh, surmounted those challenges. You are today one of the brands, fashion brands to be reckoned with in Nigeria and your designs are everywhere. Recently, you made an actual big design spotting the her, the, uh, the the late Queen of England, um, Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth, uh, during her funeral, where some Nigerian um, women, you know, wore some Ashebi celebrating Her Royal Majesty. Could you tell us the story behind that um, that 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 group of women and, of course, your design? Well, we, we are so very grateful at Della Big for um, the media that shared our our designs. Um, I can only say that it was just a big, it, it, it all started as a joke, really. Um, I have this, my big auntie, she lives in the UK. She called me, she said, Diola, I want you to perform magic. And this was, the, the funeral was going to be the Monday of the next week. And she called me on Wednesday or so to say, I want you to perform magic. I want you to make me an Ashwebi. And I want you to make me something to wear to a funeral. And I'm like, okay. She says, but I'm going to send you the logo. I usually do prints for her, as in when I make clothes for her, we put some prints on it. And I said, okay, no problem. Um, just send the logo on time. I just thought it, it was one of her company logos. And she sent the logo later. And it turns out it's the Queen of England's um, face. And I'm like, what? Is this... Um, is it the Queen's funeral you're going to wear this? She said, yes. She and her group of friends were going to attend the funeral and um, they would um, want to wear like an Ashwebi. And I'm like, we have to go and buy um, the fabric or make the fabric. It's either we buy it ready-made or I make it. And then we still have to print. I said, okay, no problem, I'll do it. So I got into the market on Thursday. I did everything that had to be done because we still had to send it to the UK on Friday, you know? And I'm like, how am I going to do this thing? I never thought it was going to um, go viral or gain... Um, media interest, you know. So I sent it to her and um, I went about my business. Uh, on Monday, I asked, I said, how are the clothes? Do they fit well? I didn't get any reply from her, but apparently that's because she was already at Hyde Park, sitting on the grass, watching the proceedings from a large screen. It's not like they went into uh, Westminster, you know, and Later on in the day, people were sending me, uh, people were sending me, were asking me, some, some lady who had been in my store when we were trying to put the prints on, she saw the prints. She was like, Diola, is this not what you made? And I'm like, what? Where did you see it? She said, ah, it's trending. No, it's all over the internet. It's all over social media. This was like 9 p.m. on um, Monday evening. I'm like, what? So I hear that um, they caught the attention of some journalists, these women. They're just a group of um, Nigerian women in the UK. They caught the attention of some journalists who got interested in knowing um, 
who made it, why they decided to wear it. As in, it was, it, 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 the, the journalists felt this was a great um, honor, you know. And um, I hear that the London Museum is even asking for the cloth to <laughs> to curate in the in the museum. So, wow! Congratulations indeed. Thank you. Congratulations oh. indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I have some of them on the screen now. That's some of them on the screen. Wow, wow. This is screenshot beautiful. from Sky News. A screenshot from Sky News showing some of them on the screen. This we had um, newspapers. We had Vogue magazine cover them. It was a great um, surprise. We're grateful that um, it caught their attention and they decided to share on their social media pages. Congratulations indeed again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Tell Thank us you more. So tell us more about your designs. How do you infuse culture into what you do? What points did at what point did you begin to um, infuse the Adiwe and Batik design? into what you do? Um, when we first started, we weren't um, working with Adire and Batik. We weren't working with Adire and Batik. We were using a lot of um, foreign textiles and fabrics. We were using a lot of those. And um, I'm somebody who has always wanted to promote um, whatever is African, whatever is Nigerian. And I just thought, yeah, now this is not who you are. You're somebody who likes to say, I'm Nigerian, I'm from Africa. Why are you making clothes that um, don't even have that Nigerian torch and feel? So I started um, looking around, okay, what kind of fabric can I use? And then it just occurred to me that, why not delve into this uh, batik and adire? I've always um, used batik and adire to make clothes as a, as a um, student. We used to buy all those Ankara t-shirts, you know? We had all of those um, tie-dye skirts, different things. So I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to do something that will let people know that we can make quality things in Nigeria from our own um, traditional textile surface design methods. So I decided why not um, use batik and tie-dye? Those ones are handmade rather than the regular Ankara that a lot of people were using. A lot of people use the Ankara wax prints. So I said, you know what? And then you now got to this time, um, you know, a passenger was promoting where batik, where all these Abel Kuta textiles. He was doing all of those things. So I jumped on the wagon and um, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> the rest is history. Tell us, who are the Labic designs really made for? So, um, the Labic is a women's clothing company. And um, the Delabic woman is the woman who wants to stand out from the crowd. She wants to be taken seriously at work and at play. She knows what she wants and she goes for it. There are women who are um, captains of industry and um, they are funky women. 
they love to be technologically savvy. They use um, they use Instagram. They they are savvy with the internet, you know. So those are the women that we make our clothes for. That woman, the winning woman, who wants to be taken seriously at work and at play. And um, a lot of our a lot of our designs um, are very contemporary. We make trendy outfits from these our batik and tie dye um, fabrics. So it's not just the bubu or uh, miro and buba. We make um, workwear. We make wear as dinner wear, evening gowns. We have the casual wear. So we make for whatever occasion that uh, you would like to dress up to. There are special occasion wear, and they are also everyday wear. And they all, with what I've seen on the screen, it is truly beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You have an, you ventured into an innovation called Just a Position. What is the story behind it? Well, at the time that I created that collection juxtaposition, it was that we wanted to show comparison between things. That's basically what um, juxtaposition is. So we had um, things that would seemingly look like they don't blend together, they don't go together, seemingly. But we put them together and if they were a hit, juxtaposition that collection was a hit so you have different prints of the Ankara wax prints different prints different colors you know being worn together as um, coordinates so that was what we did then and it was a hit we had um, pants with jackets that were odd colors Colors that would look like they wouldn't go together. Um, textures that looked like they wouldn't go together. It was fun creating juxtaposition. So things that seem, um, seemed like they were not meant to be together. We say, we, 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 we told our people, who says? Who says that you can't do it this way? So that's the story behind juxtaposition. What has been your memorable moment as a designer? My memorable moments as a designer, I would say that um, it brought me a lot of joy to, um, to have um, created a garment that caught the my Excellency, Mrs. Zola Kwashibaja, the Vice President of Nigeria's wife, um, he caught her attention. She, she bought this outfit from us. And, you know, I just thought, oh, she has bought it. I hope she wears it. And then it turns out that two or three weeks later, she wore it to the Fashion Fook event run by Mrs. Um, Yewande Zakio. She wore it there. I was um, an exhibitor at the fashion suit. And um, people ran into my stall, my little stall there to say, Tiola, Vice President's wife is um, wearing your outfit. And I'm like, really? Is she here? And they're like, yes, she's here. And she did me the honor of stopping by at the store to say, see, I'm wearing a Della big. I'm like, wow, you know, so... That was a very memorable uh, moment for me. But um, I would add that another memorable one was um, in May. Could you share 20... those pictures with us, please? Okay, let me share Mrs. Dola Koshifaj's picture with you. There she is. This is a picture of uh, Mrs. Dola Koshifaj with uh, Mrs. Yewande Zakios and Mrs. Zibukwa Woshika. The three of them are there on the screen. <laughs> so, 
so that's the dress she bought from us and she wore it to the fashion silk. It was um, a great moment of joy for me to see that um, <laughs> the number two woman in Nigeria was happy to wear a design we made with love. A design we made with love. Mm -hmm. Another memorable moment for me, another memorable moment for me was um, in May 2010, about May 2010, the most beautiful girl in Nigeria pageant was holding and um, the organizers of the show had a segment for a cosmetic company. I can't remember the name of this cosmetic company now. And they wanted us to do something really special and um, unique. So the lady asked, um, I want to talk about um, recycling and all that, you know, turning, um, using cyclical fashion, you know? And she says, can you make garments from bean bag, polythene bags? Polythene as in polythene, dust bean bag. Dust bean bag. Dust bean bag. <laughs> and I'm like, really? She said, yes, let's see if you can do it. And I'm like, how will I make um, a skirt of blouse from, you know? Um, a bean bag. So the idea came to mind, and I thought, oh, I've seen polythene sheets being sold in the markets before, as in large polythene sheets being sold in the market, just as wide as um, the yardage of cloth. So all I had to do was to buy a roll of the polythene sheets, a large roll, and we made fantastic. Cloth to, to cut the um, garments. We used the polythene bag. So that was a memorable moment in my fashion design work. It was a memorable moment for me. In your view, the Nigerian fashion industry has done so much in a short, but are we there yet? We have to give ourselves kudos. We have to. Yes, we have done so much, but um, the understanding of what fashion industry in Nigeria, a lot of people limit it to just that cost and so, and fashion is multifaceted. It's more than um, cutting cloth and producing clothes. It's more than that. There are like um, four main parts of um, fashion. There are like four main parts, as in you have the production part, you have the, um, what would I call it? You have the, um, production aspect of it. You have the um, um, production part of it, which involves um, fabric and um, textiles, fiber processing textiles. You have um, the manufacturer of the apparel. Then you have your sales and marketing, PR, all of those things. We have people who are just um, illustrators. They are not necessarily machinists. We have the people who do the fashion runway, the fashion shows, you know? So there are different aspects of it. We have the people who do the software for making the patterns for cutting. So it's a large industry. Fashion is not just a... Uh, buy material, use your tape rule, cut it and uh, give to the customer. No, no, no. In terms of, in terms of, um, are we there yet? 
we're not we're not yet there we're not yet there in terms of the um, raw material part of it yes we grow cotton in nigeria but do we manufacture fabric do we process fiber do we make yarn do we um do we produce the 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 textiles no we don't in terms of manufacturing do we have large um, manufacturing houses do we have the manufacturers who would make like 5000 pieces 10000 pieces of a style one style for us no we don't have those ones in nigeria fashion is big business you need to have all of those things in place do we have the marketing um outfits do we have people whose work it is to make sure that that thing you have produced leaves your hands and is in the hands of your consumers and in the end user do we have companies like that who take it on who will put your clothes in the departmental stores or with the stockist we the designers are the ones who do all this on our own so we're not yet there but we will get there we will get there there are also people whose job it is to just be consultants they run the business side of it for you. You make the, you do the designs and go home to sleep. They will make sure that you earn your six or seven figures. They run the business side of things. That's what they are good at. You may be good at the designing and the creative uh, aspect of it. They are good with the numbers and just getting the products out there. So. We, we, we're on our way, we're on our way, we're not yet there, but we will not, we will not, amen, we will not um, relent, we will continue to work hard to make sure we reach the top. Amen, amen to that. <laughs> so, uh, who do you consider as um, your greatest employer? especially in the industry? Well, in the industry, I won't, I, won't, I won't say in the industry. I would say that um, what, what I would say is the people who are my greatest influence, who have influenced me the most, are the people that I am close to. And who are the people that I am close to? My family, basically. My family has been a great influence on my life. Why do I say so? Um, the most, the, the, if, you, if, you, 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 if you want to um, succeed and excel, you have to... Um, watch who you associate with you need to watch you, who you associate with so for me i learned a lot from family my family is small but supportive my parents taught me and my siblings um, to aim high to work hard and have strong work ethics so all of these things that i've been able to achieve as a creative designer is all from that influence that my family, my parents had on me. So they also taught me the value in nurturing relationships that I have formed along the way. So my parents nurtured me in the right direction is what I would say. They are the ones who nurtured me in the right direction. They held the opinions that um, I have trusted the most, and they constantly inspired me to achieve more. So they are the great influence on me. But of course, I wouldn't say that um, I don't admire designers in my in my field. So I admire some of the designers you admire home and abroad. 
I, I, I admire for, for home. I admire the lady who is my namesake. She's somebody who I've always um, admired, Mrs. Diola Sego. She is my, she's my big madam. She's somebody that I, I hold in high repute. I respect her work. She's a, an excellent creative designer. Excellent, excellent yeah. creative designer. <laughs> so yes, I admire her. And then so the designer that I admire most from um, internationally is the lady called Vivian Westwood. I love her designs. She's a she's a, 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 an excellent pattern maker. Her pattern making is something else. So most of her clothes have structure, structure all the way. I admire her greatly. What's your advice for fashion designers and those who are already there, already are on their way there, so to speak? In the fashion, in the, fashion the fact that Okay, I would tell them as in if you're just starting out now, or maybe you've started already, I would like you to take notes, take strong notes, take notes that talent is not enough. It is a creative industry business. It's not a hobby. Talent is not enough. Talent is essential but you still need to hone your skills, develop them and take them to the next level. You also need to start thinking about the business side of things from the get go, from the beginning. Don't be like us that it was after we started, we now started saying, ah, let's put structure in place, let's put processes in place. We have to make sure from the start, you have to make sure from the start, that you establish yourself as an entrepreneur, as a business person, not just as a creative designer or creative person. It's so important to know that talent is not enough. Business acumen is part of what you should get. You have to be streetwise, street savvy, make sure that you hit bottom line in the venture that you have decided to go into. So that will be my main advice to those who are just starting. Any new projects by Elavik? Um, there's quite a number of things that we want to go into. We want to um, start a school to, you know, um, pass on the knowledge to others. You would um, register. <laughs> you would um, register to come to learn the pattern making, the creative side of the business, and also the business side of it too. You would. Um, we're, we're working towards that. We're working towards that. It's what we want to do, and we want to get more serious with our social responsibility. We have a number of projects that we're working on, which we would uh, um, come out with as we make progress on them. But we want to um, take our community social responsibility more serious. There are a number of things in the community that we want to um, get into. So that's the next level for us aside from doing the business that we're doing of, you know, making the clothes and retailing them. So those are the things that we want to get into. Yeah. And of course, we want to go global. <laughs> we're thinking global now. It's not just to um, have a business running in Nigeria. We want to think global. We want to establish ourselves even in the other states of um, Nigeria and um, take the community social responsibility more seriously. Wow, just for me, the, the, 
the next question, which would have been, um, where do you hope to see your brand in the next couple of years? Um, or uh, you've already been celebrated um, internationally. Where is that you're looking at and you're targeting? What's that is that your eye? Well, we want to continue to grow the business, business development, product development, um, establish outlets to sell the clothes for retailing and all that, establish ourselves in, first of all, in the UK and in the United States before we move on to other parts of Europe and um, North America, but we want to take this thing more seriously. Fashion is a business, it's not a hobby. It's a business, it's not a hobby. So we want to do it the way the Zaras have done it, you know, establish it, hire the right people, the right team. We want it to succeed and live after us. We want it to succeed and live after us. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. Wow. What what a journey. Congratulations, man. And thank you. Thank so you so much, Miss Evelyn. Beautiful time this week. It's been quite engaging. I'm looking forward thank you to so doing much. more with you. Having a lot thank of conversations about um a lot of the new projects that you have, have planned out. And I'm sure um, those listening to also took one or two things from your life experience, which has been really very, very rich. It's, a, it's been a great delight sharing with you. And I hope that um, those listening to us um, have learned one thing or two, just like you said. I've learned one thing or two. It will be um, a delightful thing for me to know that um, they they have taken something away from this conversation. Thank you so much for uh, being here. And if there are any questions to um, um, we're always here to let me take them. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sure if you have any questions. Um, it's very, very much ready to um, take those things on as well. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Thank you very much, um, Evelyn and uh, Diola. Uh, I think we can take some questions. We still have some uh, few minutes. Uh, if you are in the house, I think we could take questions. Uh, before we go over to the next uh, conversation or panel. Delabik, are you there? Thank you, Prof. Prof. Yes, I am. Okay, good. I'm right. Yeah, thank you. Um, we, would, we need questions in the chat or in the Q&A for Diola Kavsin. You can also ask directly if you want to speak. You will unmute you and then you could ask your questions. Is there any question? Left? Okay, while we wait for questions, maybe I should ask uh, Diola, um, who are your designers? Who are the ones who design the fabrics for you? Do you make them yourself or do you buy from the open market? 
Well, um, thank you, Prof. I have the people who do my textile, my surface textile design for me, and they do it based on um, commissioned work. I have those ones who do it for me. And then sometimes I buy from the open markets, but most of the time it's commission based just to be able to help um, these women look after their homes, look after their families, a way of promoting their work and acknowledging them. So they do it for me. I also have some people who do it in Lagos. We have those people who do it in those um, Southwestern states. And then we have those ones who do it in Lagos. So I give them the designs. Um, they do the, especially for batik, they do mm -hmm. the, um, it's so nice. It's in the drawing on it and um, exactly. the dyeing and everything. So that's how we we get our fabrics. This you may help me plug this. No, leave that on. Okay. Um, it's Evelyn in the house. Evelyn Osagi. You have to mute her. Um, I think we have some um, comments or these questions in the chat. Uh, can you share your social media handle? Also, I'm also based uh, in making Adre and Batik. That's from Farouk Ojomo. I'm sure you have an official maybe Instagram page. Yes, I'll share that in the chat box now. Okay. I'll share that in the chat box, but we're at Della Beak on Instagram. It's just Della Beak, but I'll share the exact um, address in the chat box. Okay, then uh, we also have a comment from Miriam Onubrakpeya Akinyemi, who says, thank you, uh, keep up the good work, keep up the great work. Hopefully I'll get a chance to wear one of your creations. <laughs> thank you, Miss Miriam. We'll look forward to that. <laughs> okay. We'll look forward to that. Okay. I don't think we have questions for the Labik. Um, thank you for having me, Prof. Thank you so I'm much. I'm very grateful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you too.